Each month, hundreds of different tabletop, board, and card games appear on store shelves, launch on Kickstarter, and are dusted off of game shelves to revisit gamers' collective consciousnesses. Well, this list tracks games with the biggest gains in traffic, discussion, sales, and news online, all factors that give these 10 titles that we're about to discuss momentum. Or momentum. Hey there, I'm Chaz Marler with Pair of Dice Paradise, and the first game gaining popularity on our list this month is Teotihuacan City of Gods by Board and Dice. Now, if I had a time machine, I would travel back to the greatest city in Mesoamerica and witness the glory and twilight of the powerful pre-Columbian civilization. Yes, that, that is exactly what I would choose to do if I was given the opportunity to traverse the very fabric of time. Now, in Teotihuacan, City of Gods, each player commands a force of worker dice which grow in strength with every move. And while managing their workforce and resources, players then develop new technologies, climb the steps of the three great temples, build houses for the inhabitants of the city, and raise the legendary and breathtaking Pyramid of the Sun in the center of the city. Publisher, Board and Dice, recently announced an upcoming expansion for Teotihuacan, which has the, the equally challenging to pronounce name, Shadow of Xitle. Now This expansion adds 10 new technologies and 10 new starting tiles for players to experiment with. Additionally, this expansion is compatible with both Solitaire Mode and the game's previous first expansion, Teotihuacan Late pre classic <laughs> That's the one I flub? Late pre classic period. I'm a professional. The ninth game on this month's list is 2015's Viticulture Essential Edition, in which players use their time machines to find themselves in rustic, pre-modern Tuscany after having inherited meager vineyards which I assume are infested by vampires. Now, with only a few plots of land, an old crush pad, a tiny cellar, a backpack full of crucifixes, and three workers at their disposal, the players must dream big and work hard in order to be the first to transform their humble hovel into a successful winery free of the undead. Viticulture, the Essential Edition, comes with all the components for Viticulture, but also includes some of the expansions from Tuscany, including 36 Mama and Papa cards, field cards, previously known as properties, expanded and revised visitors, and 24 Automa cards for the solo variant, along with several minor rules changes. A digital version of Viticulture for iOS, Android, and Steam has been in development by developer Digidiced for several months now, and this digital version is planned to support 1-6 to six players, local and online multiplayer, an interactive tutorial, asynchronous play with push notifications, an implementation of the game's newest rules updates, and has an estimated release date of... Well, no one knows, because it hasn't been determined. But Digidiced does have a newsletter, Facebook and Twitter pages, where updates will likely be published about whether the digital version of the game will include any Draculas. The next game that made strides this month is Terra Mystica and its most recent expansion, Merchants of the Seas. Terra Mystica is a full information game that's designed to eliminate the luck factor. Instead, it rewards strategic planning. In the game, each player governs one of 14 different factions, each with their own specialties. And so, with planning and foresight, players attempt to rule as great an area as possible while developing their faction's unique skills. In the new Merchants of the Seas expansion, more trade can flow between the factions with their brand new ships sailing along the rivers. There's also a new large building, the Shipyard, which provides new options and produces ships with 20 faction board extensions. The game's factions must also adjust to an entirely new set of 12 round scoring tiles, 4 new ship related favors, 3 new bonus tiles, 3 additional power actions, uneven fingernails, town tiles, and 2 maps, loon lakes, and fjords. Additionally, Terra Mystica's previous expansion, Fire and Ice, is not required in order to play Merchants of the Seas, but enough content is included in the newest expansion to make it backwards compatible with the first expansion. Merchants of the Seas is backwards compatible with, with uh, the, the Fire and Ice, which I don't know why I didn't just say their names there, but I'm saying them now so that it's on record, because that's the way it works. So you know. 
I didn't know. I read it, though. At number seven is a game that I've been seeing mentioned everywhere this past month, which now that, now that I think about it completely explains why it's included on this list. Because that's the entire premise of this list, isn't it? And that game is Lawyer Up by Rock Manor Games. Lawyer Up, a two-player asymmetrical card game, is about making your case, capitalizing on your influence, and implementing a winning strategy. In the game, players are presented with a case to argue in a court of law and begin by sifting through all the evidence, drafting cards based on that evidence, and picking ones that they think will be necessary for them to win the case. Players then take turns calling and questioning witnesses, building arguments by chaining together cards, earning influence, and, if you're me, attempting to bribe the bailiff for a better parking space. The players then spend their influence to sway the biases of the jury to their side until the case is ultimately decided. Lawyer Up just successfully completed its Kickstarter campaign last week and is currently scheduled to ship March of next year. At number six is a game that I, admittedly, knew very little about until seeing it come up in this month's list, and that game is Pax Pamir, designed by Cole Werrell. Now, in Pax Premier, players assume the role of 19th century Afghan leaders attempting to forge a new state after the collapse of the Durrani Empire. The game centers around purchasing cards from a central market and then playing those cards in a row called a court. Not a court of law like a lawyer up, but a different type of court, more like a royal court. Perhaps a court of tennis. That type of court. You see what I am saying? Playing cards adds units to the game's map and grants access to additional actions that can be taken then to disrupt other players and influence the course of the game. Now, if this game snuck up on you like some sort of tabletop vampire, like, like it did me, make note that it's been confirmed by its publisher that the recent Kickstarter for its second edition print run, which recently ended, will reopen at some point in the future to accept late pledges. So, it's recommended that those interested keep tabs on this, either on the game's Board Game Geek page or its Kickstarter campaign page, for more updates and details. And now, before we head into a break from our sponsor, I'm going to leave you with a riddle to ponder during the commercial. What do a vampire and a block of processed cheese have in common? Welcome back! Now the fifth most popular game in this month's list is Takedo from Funforge, which puts players in the shoes of curious travelers journeying across the East Sea Road, one of the most magnificent roads in all of Japan. And while they are traveling, players will meet people, sample fine meals and exotic cheeses, collect beautiful keepsakes, discover breathtaking panoramas, and visit temples and other places. But at the end of the game, not about the destination, but the journey, as the traveler who's had the most rewarding experiences will claim the win and remind you about it your next, your next three game nights in a row. Takedo has a highly praised app for iOS and Android, which was made available for free during several days throughout March. Of course, it's too late to take advantage of that free offer now, but if you'd like to spend some time exploring other apps that have recently been made available for free, well, I found a website called appsliced.co, which appears to only track apps for the iOS platform, but might be a good starting spot for finding several new affordable diversions. If you want to check that out, well, you'll find a link to it in this video's description. Stumbling up the charts to number four this month is Clank, a deck building adventure in which players race to steal precious artifacts and escape with their precious booty intact. There are now nearly a dozen different games and expansions available in the Clank series, from the classic fantasy deck builder, to a sci-fi setting, to a version with changing paths, and even a legacy version. And if you're interested in what Clank has to offer, but just don't know where to begin with all these different versions, well, then may I be so bold as to suggest this Clank Buyer's Guide video that I put together a few months ago, which may help you find the version of the game that's the best fit for you. In this video's description, you'll find a link to this Buyer's Guide video, but you won't find a link to my opinion on the best brand of cheese, which is, which is Tillamook. You don't need a video because I just told you, because it's, it's there, there's a video you're watching now, but it's, it, it is Tillamook. That's the best best cheese.
A resurgence in popularity was made this past month by 2012's Robinson Crusoe Adventures on the Cursed Island by Portal Games, which caused the game to descend out of the shadows like a lactose intolerant vampire onto a non-dairy cheesecake. To claim this third spot on this list, this game took players and threw them off of a boat, shipwrecking them on a deserted island where they will face various challenges, such as building a shelter, finding food, fighting wild beasts, protecting themselves from weather changes, and deciphering how to pronounce the names of Teotihuacan's expansions without the help of Google. So what's new with Robinson Crusoe? Well, Portal Games recently announced an upcoming Kickstarter campaign to finance the production of Robinson Crusoe, The Book of Adventures, an almanac which will contain new Robinson Crusoe scenarios ranked by their level of difficulty and complexity and theme. Now, the Book of Adventures is designed to offer scenarios suited for a variety of audiences, including ones crafted specifically for playing with children, families, and also in-depth scenarios especially for experienced gamers. Portal also posted a video all about the Book of Adventures on their YouTube channel, so here's that video now in its entirety. Open, if you dare. And that's it. That's, that's, that's all we have to go on. Still, hyped! Alright, so at number two, we have a game that I assumed was going to surge in popularity this month, but admittedly, I wasn't really looking forward to talking about this, and that's, of course, Pandemic. Now, in Pandemic, players are disease-fighting specialists who are on a mission to treat several disease hotspots across the globe while researching their cures before they spread too far and get out of hand. So, yeah, topical. To be honest, I spent quite some time pondering, you know, what to say in response to Pandemic's presence on the countdown this month. Should I just go ahead and treat this like any other game on the list? Should I, should I ignore it and skip over it since it's a sensitive subject right now? Or should I just distract myself with really lame vampiric cheese references? Always an option. But this time I actually decided that, you know, this might be an opportunity to mention that there's things that gamers like us can do right now to be real-life heroes all across the globe. For example, one way may be uh, supporting hunger relief organizations such as FeedingAmerica.org right here in the States. Because this is a challenging time right now for a lot of people, and some people may need to receive help, while others are in a position to provide it. So helping provide a meal to someone in need can be a simple and effective way to be someone's hero today. Is it? And now, the game that gained the most momentum this month to reach the top of our list is Through the Ages, A Story of Civilization, a civilization-building game in which players attempt to build the best civilization through careful resource management, discovering new technologies, electing the right leaders, building wonders, and maintaining a strong military. The game takes place throughout history, beginning in the Age of Antiquity and ending in the Modern Age, during which Weaknesses in any area can be exploited by their opponents. Through the Ages was certainly propelled up the list this month in part by its new expansion, Leaders and Wonders, which adds new cards and options for players, increasing the wealth of variety that players can explore to weave the flow of history and, ultimately, build a civilization that can command it. The Leaders and Wonders expansion recently started shipping in Europe and is currently scheduled to arrive in U.S. markets by late May, just in time for National Cheese Day. And there's the games with the most momentum as of April 2020. And for more board game countdowns, news, previews, and pontification, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and check out all the other videos posted on this channel so you don't miss any of the not-at-all-pointless things that I have to say about plastic, cardboard, and dairy products.